Hey, Mike, what do Kelly Slater and PT have in common? I don't know. They're both world champs? Nope. They both own Endless Summer Box Set. Oh, my God. Rad. You guys, you can get it, too. The link's in the show notes. Hey everybody, welcome to the QuiverCast, where we chat with surfers from all around the world, from all walks of life, and we get their story. Find us at www.thequivercast.com. I am Mike, your host. Let's get into the show. All right, everybody. Today, I'm stoked. (laughs) We have Jody Cooper on the Quivercast. How are you doing, Ooh, Jody? I'm good, mate. I'm really good. Um, I'm just about embark on a bit of a fun trip up northwestern Australia. So I'm I'm here down south, the, the way south in Albany, and it's bloody freezing. I can tell you, I'm not used to this cold down here. So I'm just getting ready, um, packing up the four wheel drive and the and the van to to head north to two months in the desert. So yeah, I'm I'm pretty psyched at the moment. Let's start there mm-hmm. then. Are you, you're in Albany, is that where you grew yeah, up? Yeah, this is my hometown. It's the most southern town in Western Australia, so it's right down, feels like today, not far from the Antarctica. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we've had some really big cold fronts coming through this year. I think that they said it's been the coldest June in history, which is, cool. that's cold. Uh, so yeah, um, so I'm just getting ready. I'm, I'm heading up north with my sister. And we're going to meet my nephew, her son, and his partner, who all surf. So we're going on a bit of a bit of a hike. But yeah, I'm in my hometown at the moment, which is which is great fun. It's always fun to come back to where you're from. So you don't live there permanently? No, I, I can't handle the cold, mate. I hate okay. the cold. I mean, it's beautiful here. It's some of the best beaches in the world. Great surf. But um, I live up near Byron Bay on the of east coast of Australia. Yeah, I just love the warm weather, mate. So it's plenty of waves up there, and I just I like surfing in the least amount of wetsuit as possible yeah no i don't blame you being a young surfer i guess you started a little bit later than the the yeah, girls do today or the boys 16, really 16 16 and a half when i really got into it but 16 which is quite late really and considering where i'm from today's world more, yeah yeah today's world for sure and there's there's no real local close beaches here there's there's one beach with a close out but to get to all the beaches here, you need a car. So it's quite tricky to learn to surf here as, as a young person. Yeah. It being so cold, what motive, like what, what spoke to you about surfing? Well, you know what? You know, when you're young, you don't care if it's cold. You're out there when it's guys flops <laughs> in the water. When you're cold, you feel no pain, Mike. You know what I mean? It's just like, <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's like I'm looking at the kids now. They're running around with bloody, you know, spring suits on and I can't even get my four three on and get out there but um <laughs> I, you know what I think for me I was a really big skateboarder we we actually got one of the first skate parks in the summer, southern hemisphere here yeah. the first skate park in Australia uh Russ Howe who's a California thing he came out and opened the, the skate park he was a big skateboarder American in the 70s so it was a really big thing so I was a I was a fanatical skateboarder and um you know, I got fourth in the against all the guys in Australia when I was a young grommet, 12, 13, 14. And it was just a natural regression because it was when the surfing became like the late 70s and that whole image became, uh, you know, it just, you know, all the, all, the, all the young fellas were the hottest looking young fellas. And when I was at school, I thought, well, I wanted to sort of venture to somewhere where I was hanging out with the, the, the spunkiest young blokes, really. That, and that's the truth. And you know, they all had that long golden blonde hair and just, you know what, I really fell in love with the surfing's image. It just looked free mm-hmm. and that, that's what really enticed me, just the whole, it wasn't a real, it wasn't a sport then. It was like, it was It was just a, you know, it was like a cult thing really. It was, like a um, lifestyle? Yeah, it was a lifestyle. Yeah, thanks. That's, that's, that's the word I'm looking for. It was just this lifestyle and it just, you know, the whole thing where they're all driving around in combi vans and back of utes and just living this life it just it just really drew me to it and then I went to school and kind of like 
you know, surfing was like that cool thing that the cool kids did. And I remember telling my mates, oh, yeah, I know how to surf. And I didn't. And I just, <laughs> you know, stupid things you say when you're a kid, you boast about something. And yeah. then I, we went off to school holidays and I thought, oh, my God, I've lied to everyone. And I got the biggest guilt complex. And I thought, well, I've got to go out and learn to surf now. Otherwise, I'm going to be, a, I'm going to be found out as being a liar. So that kind of really, to be honest, truth is what kind of drew me to it and what made me actually, you know, force myself into learning to surf. My older brother actually surfed. He was he was dabbling in it, so that kind of made it a bit easier because I was he's five years older than me, and I was I ended up being that young sister that kept going, "Take me, take me, take yeah. me," and he was like, "Oh God," you know. So yeah. yeah, he was pretty good. So that's kind of how I fell into it. Because you're on a skateboard, it is a boarding sport, just like surfing, yeah. but they're completely different. You oh, know that. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. They're chalk and cheese. You know, I mean, yeah. I mean, it, 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 you know, it, exactly right. But you still, I was a real coordinated kid, you know, like I played mm-hmm. every, I was sports captain at my high school, you know what I mean? So I was yeah. like captain of the hockey team, basketball team, you name it, any sport, I gave it a crack and I picked it up. I, you know what, mate? Hand-eye coordination for me, I've never had to work out. Everything okay. else in my life, I've had to work out. <laughs> you know, if I drop the soap in the shower, it doesn't fall to the ground. I pick it up before it even hits the ground. You know, oh it's wow, just, it's a weird thing. It's it's a it's a, actually quite a bizarre thing. Hand-eye coordination. I've just, it's yeah, that thing I've never. It's had. a good thing to have. Yeah, it is actually. It comes in handy sometimes. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I just picked it up really quick. You know what I mean? Because okay, and I've got big feet. I reckon having big feet helps too. <laughs> so they stuck to the board. Exactly. I've got big fat hoofers. So I think that's. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> All right. That's funny. Yeah. But I kind of took to it like a duck, duck to water, as they say. Yeah. So you did pretty good, you say, in the beginning. But let me ask you this yeah. Was it easier or harder than you thought oh, look, before you actually tried it? it? Was, it's, I'll tell you this. I reckon surfing is one of the hardest sports. I've done a lot of sport in my life. And, yeah. you know, usually most sports, you can pick it up in a day or two, or if you do it consistently for two weeks, you yeah. can do that thing. I mean, you might not be the best or the, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. but you can, pre- you know, let's take snowboarding or skiing, you know, like you go skiing for a week, by the end of that week, you can you can get down that mountain and, and you're doing it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Surfing is probably one of the hardest things you'll do in your life, and it is. But yeah. I was really lucky, you know. I, I had a bunch of guys where I'm from that were really cool. I was the only girl that surfed in, in my whole town okay. for years, and they yeah. were really cool. Uh, I ended up when I was about sixteen and a half, and I sort of got into it. I had I, I got an older boyfriend who was he was like twenty, and he had his driver's license, and my parents allowed that, which was a pretty good thing. And he was a keen surfer, <laughs> so um, I know. And he took me surfing every day over the school holidays and and on weekends, so. I kind of picked it up really quick. The the guys where I'm from were so beautiful. They were so encouraging and they'd be like, no, Joe, you can't come out the back today. Just play in the white water. It's too big. So I'd just be getting pounded in the white water and I'd stay out as long as they would, but I'd just be riding white water. And then on the small days, they'd say, come on, quick, paddle, 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 paddle. Come on, get out here. And I'd get out the back and they'd encourage me and go for this one and push me in. So I, I was pretty fortunate, you know, that I had a lot of really nice men around me. Do you still surf with any of these guys today? Yeah, I do. Yeah, lineup? yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm home now, and some of them still surf. Like cool. life, a few of them have fallen off their perch, or some of them have stopped yeah. surfing, and you know. But there's a few of the lads that are out there that still surf, and yeah, it's great to see them out there. It's awesome. Yeah. You've known them kind of all your life, really. Yeah, absolutely. And you're still surfing together. Yeah, That's awesome. It's brilliant. I love it. Sometimes I paddle out, and they go. Is that you, John? <laughs> Is that you under all that beard and that and no hair on your head? You know what I mean? I can't recognize it. He goes, yeah, it's me, Jokes. I'm like, oh, my God, hello. <laughs> oh, that's so cool, though. Yeah, it's unreal. It's brilliant. It's a, it's a good way to see someone you haven't seen in a while. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. So you realize you're pretty good at surfing. You realize you're pretty good at skateboarding, obviously, yeah. also. At what point do you decide I'm good enough to turn pro? Or what made you want to turn pro? Yeah, well, I think it was just a natural regression, Mike. Like going back to what I was saying, I was, let's say this, I was, I'm pretty competitive. Like, you know, when okay. it comes to achieving things, you know, I, I, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a middle child, Mike. I've got to like, I've got to prove the point triple, mate. Like, you know what I mean? Like, 
I, yes. I'm, I'm one of those kids where you don't get heard because you're stuck in the middle. Like you're like, look at me, okay. look at me, look at me, look at me, and no one's looking okay. at you. You know, because you're just lost right. in that family system. So. In all that stuff, I try to be an overachiever, like anything to get the attention, mm-hmm. you know. Like, so you know, in any sport I did, um, I really tried to be the best I could. So, when I sort of got into surfing and fell in love with it, I've got to say that, like, it was it was an addiction. Okay, it was a one hundred percent addiction, and probably my very first love, to be honest. I was addicted. I just couldn't get enough of it. So I, you know, like as going back to what I said, I was like captain of of the hockey team and this and that. And I remember running into the hockey games with two minutes to go and I'd have salt and crusted eyebrows and the brother would pick me out of the car as it was still driving and I'd be running on the fields putting my shoes on because I'd be late because we would have been surfing and it was pumping and I didn't want to go. And so, I kind yeah. of, you know, when I picked it up, I just took it like bull by the horn sort of thing and I just loved it. So, And then when I sort of improved, I think because I've always been competitive and wanted to go to the, to the elite level in any sport that I did, I just, okay. oh, wow, I'd really love to do something with this. And I remember thinking how funny it was because I used to say to people, like, I want to be a professional surfer. And they'd go, well, what's that? You know, like no mm-hmm. one even knew. Cause, and, it, right. you know, and, 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 and that started in the 80s. Like this would have been around 80, 1980, mm-hmm. like 79 sort of thing into 80. There really wasn't much around yeah. you know what i mean it was i mean right. of course they had a few events in hawaii and things like that and bell's beach did exist but it really wasn't like you know the asp hadn't kicked off or anything like that it was there weren't yeah obviously professionalism had started of course but it was very you know as we know the history Young. Of it was very bare minimum wasn't it so you're looking at this thing but you have this dream it sounds like yeah, it pretty much was. It a was dream. a dream. It was a dream. It was just visualizing okay. the dream and then just going through the stages of making that dream happen. So I basically just started entering a couple of. Um, I entered my first event in Perth, which is about five hours north of where I live, which is like going to the big smoke. I mean, that's like, you know, little country folk. Yeah. We're heading to the big smoke. You know what I mean? And it's just like. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, off we go. You know, mum's got me in the car and we drive up and I didn't know anybody. So it was quite nerve wracking and it was quite intimidating because okay. I just, you know, I, I didn't even know how any of that worked. So and I remember yeah. rocking up and I, anyway, long story short, went to my first event and I did really good. I won the women's, women's, the, wow. there was like three of us in it or something like that. And then I got home and then about a week later, I get this phone call from, and this nearly ended my career actually, because I'll tell you why in a minute. But, uh, I got this phone call from a surfboard company and said, Hey, we saw you're at the contest. We'd really like to sponsor you with surfboards. I picked up the phone and it was like, Is, is Jody Cooper there? And I said, Yeah, this is Jody Cooper. Hi, we're yeah. from Cordonly Surfboards and blah, 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 blah. And we saw you surfing at the contest. We'd like to sponsor you. I mean, could you imagine that? Like a 17 year old grommet. Like, I was yeah. just like, I was Got like, her. I couldn't believe it. It was just like I'd I'd won the Olympics or something. So I hung up the phone, and I ran out the back door to to scream out to my brother out the back. But I forgot that the back door was closed because it was glass, and I ran through the whole glass sliding glass door <laughs> and smashed it and woke up on the ground with about a thousand cuts all over me. Oh no! Yeah, and first time I'd ever knocked myself out of my life. Like I, said, I, shit. I know I was so lucky, but I, and, and lucky I had. We used to wear five hundred one Levi jeans, and back in the day when they oh yeah like thick, thick of, jeans, you know they used to come like pieces of cardboard. They weren't pre washed. Yeah, and they were like I reckon they saved my life because it was just like wow. I had a thousand little cuts in those jeans, but I, yeah. Anyway, so that's kind of the start of my career. You know, I went to that contest and got a sponsorship, and from then on, it just sort of kind of blossomed, sort of thing. You know. So let me ask you, there's, there's very few women in the, in the contest. Are you going in there to make friends with them or are you going there to do your competitor and you want to. Oh, I was going there to whip their ass. (laughs) No, No, I'm competitive, mate. No, I want to. And you know what? To be honest, I'd never really seen a girl surfer before. So I wanted. That was my next question. Yeah. I I needed to go there and see what my, you know, what, 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 where am I in the, in, on the totem pole, you know, like. Yeah. I needed to see, like, am I good? Because all the guys say, geez, yeah. you're bloody good. You're getting better than us, you know. And so yeah. back in those days, there was no internet. There was no 
TV stations yeah. showing surfing. There was no magazines with women in it. So I, I needed to get out there, you know, and, and sort of see, you know, where I stood. So that was that was the main – and compete, you know. So, yeah, that was of the course. main reason, yeah. That's rad. That's a, that's a good – I like that story. Yeah. You, you realize you're up to par. Yeah. So you keep doing more and more contests and Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kept doing more contests and then I thought, right, you know, I still want to go. And then, of course, as I'm growing with my surfing, surfing is sort of growing quite quickly too, you know. Like it, it yeah. kind of went through leaps and bounds, didn't it, you know. Mm-hmm. And then I was sort of watching it and then I started instigating about things and I learned that there was some – um you know, there was some amateur events on the East Coast. So by this stage, I'm okay. 17, and I'm yeah. I'm in my last year of high school. So when you leave when you leave high school, you're pretty much 17 and a half. So I've got my driver's license by this stage because in Australia you can get your driver's license at 17. So I'm pretty stoked. Okay. I can drive now. I can drive, and I was doing a couple of drives over to Margaret River and mm-hmm. surfing against the boys against the events there at things like the Margaret wow. River Pro and stuff like that. I think I got out of a couple of heats and scared all the boys, and that was a that was a scary thing because you know they didn't want to be beaten by a girl back in those days. Uh, different yeah. these days, I think the guys accept it because the women are surfing so good. But um, yeah, you know. Uh, and then when I was seventeen, and I, t- I was about to turn eighteen, and I decided it was time to hit the east coast because I hadn't, I hadn't really been over to the east coast surfing. So yeah, I travelled around Australia for a year with a mate of mine mm-hmm. from from Albany. And I just went discovering, and I went. I'm going to go see what the girls are like on the east coast. What what the rest of the Australia surfs like. So yeah. I travelled and sort of you know bum my way around Australia. I entered a couple of events. So I entered like the amateur events, like the Australian Open, you know, and we have a couple of other events. And I got fourth in my very first contest. So that wow. was a good indication that oh, I'm not doing too bad if I can get fourth in Australia. And no one, no one had ever heard awesome. about me or seen me. So it was like, it was, wow. like, oh, where did this chick come from? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's kind of launched it. And then so I, I went on the East Coast for that six months or, you know, eight months. And then I went to Sydney and I ended up meeting Pam Burridge. And oh, yeah. uh, Pam Burridge was an icon to me because I that the one yes. person I'd learned about and read about in which, in a magazine which in Australia we have this magazine called the Women's Weekly, and it's like every housewife in the planet in Australia has read Women's Weekly. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's one of those magazines. Okay. And she yes. made it to Women's Weekly, an article one time, and I remember cutting the pictures out and putting her on my wall and thinking, one day I'm going to meet that girl. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's ironic that we've become really good mates, you know. And then so I met Pam Burridge, and that's like meeting – that was like meeting my – I, you know, my hero of all time, and I was yeah, like of course, nervous and flustered, and like, oh my god, it's Pat Burridge, because I ended up living in Manly for a little while because some friends mm-hmm. took me in there, and then um, I met Pam because Pam was a Manly local, and then I yep. just started asking her questions. So you know, what's it like, and what do you do, and and she's like, you well, you just turn pro, and back in those days, there was that real difference between amateur and professional, and I know you had that mm-hmm. in America too. You know, you had your the, the real amateur status and if you're amateur you couldn't go on professional events because then you'd lose your amateur status and all that right the money money that's right and I thought about it and I thought well I'm going to work my way up to being the world amateur champion when I would just cut straight to the jugular vein and be the world professional champion that seems stupid smart yeah and smart. I just thought why am I going to waste my life going for something you're not going to make money so I thought no stuff this I'm going to go home save up some money, and then Pam told me all the different events and how to contact the surfing uh, association. Mm -hmm. So I entered in some events and went home and I worked in a fish canning factory for a few months, did a lot of local um, money driving. My my hometown was really cool. My, My The actual town itself, you know, got behind me and gave me money and the local council gave me money. It was just amazing. Wow. Yeah, it was really cool, hey. Like yeah. we'd have, you know, local cake drives and stuff like that and we'd stop people wow. in the street and people would – yeah, so it was pretty awesome. So I saved up enough money to go on my first ASP tour adventure and I had to go overseas. This is 19. By this stage, I'm 19. So, I, so it's like 80, probably like 79 and 80, yeah, something like Yeah, that? 81 I think it was, something oh, like that, maybe. Okay. Yeah, okay. I went on I went on 
81. Yeah, I think it was like that. And then I went on tour for the, my first wow. year. Wow. And I had to do the trials event. And the funny yes. thing was my first contest, how's this? So I, I'm coming from, you know, the power of Western Australia. I, I think mm. a lot of your viewers would know how powerful the waves in Western Australia are. Yeah. And and, and my first event was in Atlantic City. So oh, in the East in like Coast. East Coast. Yeah. 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 And it was honestly, I'm not. T- it was. It was like half an ankle height. It was like. Wow. It was so small that was in in my in my measuring stick. It was unsurfable. So it was. It yes. was pretty tough, you know, going from those sorts of conditions to. Those sorts of conditions. It was. Awesome. How'd you do? Um. Oh, I didn't do that well. I don't think. But I look yeah. at the end of the day. I, you know, I, I did the whole thing, and then I went to California, and I spent a lot of time there, and I did all the. Yeah. I went to Hawaii, and I, I did all the trials events, and I ended up qualifying that year at least. So I, I qualified as a seated surfer for the next, for the next year. So that was good. Yeah, this question came to mind, and I've seen Pam Burge surf yep. in real life. You know, in like yep. mid eighties or something, and she rips. It's like she oh, surfs absolutely. super good. Absolutely. So, do you remember the first time surfing with her, and what did you think? Were you trying to impress her with oh, your surfing? Oh, mate, I was trying to impress her so hard. I was, I had the face <laughs> of like, I was like that, like that, that poker face. You know what I mean? I had the full poker face on, pretending I'm so, I'm so cool. I can out surf you. I was always <laughs> yeah. in between us two. We had a, we had the healthiest rivalry. It was just, yeah, it was just that that rivalry was burning. But um, but underneath all that, I was just like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, it's yes. Oh my god, oh my god, don't look, don't yeah. look, don't look. You know, don't pay too much attention. <laughs> like I was just, I was a starstruck little kid. Even though I think I'm older than her, you know what I mean? I might be one year older. Yeah. Than her. But yeah, I was super. One, I wanted to do a big carving cut back right in her face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you guys still friends today? Yeah, we are. Yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. So she kind of helped you though, like. Oh, for could, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she did. She's, you know, she was really open to it. She was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, come on, this is all you need to do. You do this and blah blah blah." And then we went on tour and we travelled a bit together, and you know, we were, yeah. we were very competitive against each other. You know what I mean? Who was going to win that yeah. first world title, and or who was going to? We're always very happy for each other, but we're mm-hmm. very, very competitive for sure. You weren't giving heats away. No, no one. Well, we weren't even giving free surfs away. Like, yeah. <laughs> we were going for free surfs trying to out-surf each other. We'd be coming in going, That's like, excellent. I, I surf better than you out there today. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, yeah, it was yeah. full on. That's rad. Yeah. So you, when you turn pro, you you make the tour the first year. How many other women were on tour with you? Uh, did you have any real rivalries? Is there someone you had to beat besides oh, Pam? Oh, oh, there was always the, you know, of course, it was always that top crew, you know. Like, once mm-hmm. we all got comfortable on the tour, there was, you know, King Mary, there was – um. Frida yeah. Zamba, Wendy Botha, Pam, you know, there was always that sort of, you know, that crew that were always the one that were the ones to beat, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that yeah. Was, yeah, definitely. I mean, they're the, they're the ones. I mean, everyone on the day, you know, then there was obviously as, as it went in through different different years, different girls came through right. through and, and stuff like that. But initially they were the first crew that, you know, I mean, you know, I remember being on the tail end of, of events and I remember even um going to Hawaii for the first time and there'd be like some of the older crew. I mean, I surfed against Margo in an event at Sunset. Yeah. I surfed against, I think even Rel was in a heat when I first got there in Hawaii, okay. that is, you know, Debbie yeah. Beecham. Um, you know, there was a few of the older crew that were just leaving that era. Uh, yes. Brenda Rogers and stuff like that. Um, and then... We, then the whole then there was like this whole avalanche of new crew coming through from the eighties kind of thing. So, but you know, basically in my days, it was that crew, the Freeders and the Kims and the and the Wendy's. Oh, and of course, then Lisa came in like a little bit later and stuff like that. And yes, a little whipper snipper chipping around at your eels, and you're like flicking her off, going nick off your little pest. <laughs> and then look what she turned out to be the one, the, one of the best female servers in, on the planet. So yeah. Right. I'm glad I, I got to witness her come up from a little teenager into what she is today. There's very few women. You guys Are you guys all friendly? Are you guys? Uh, no, we're being... very highly competitive. I wouldn't say it was friendly. I mean, look, there was, okay. it was civil. It was, um, 
Okay. Yeah, we weren't like, ah, you bitch, you know, like you, like, yeah. but it was, it was a healthy, like, rivalry. There was some. You were professional. You wanted to Yeah, we were professional, but there was some serious, like, oh, look what she's wearing. Like, you know, there, there was some serious, oh. like, there was some, you know. Shit talking? Yeah, there was some shit talking, probably. <laughs> yeah, let's be honest, you know. There was like, okay. oh, look at Wendy, you know, like, da 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 da. But, you know, we weren't nasty or anything like that, but there was, it was, okay. it was, there was rivalry for sure. Okay. 100%. Now, was it clicky? Did you have your group of girls? And yeah, I'd say you so. Group, even the guys? Yeah, we, yeah, it was clicky. Like, everyone had their little group. Like, you know, like okay. uh, Frida and Flea, boyfriend and girlfriend, they hung out together and they were just a little okay. clicky group. They had their own force field around them. No one could infiltrate that one. And then, yeah. you know, <laughs> and then, you know uh, uh, Kim had her boyfriend, Brian, and then she would okay. hang out with Alyssa Swartstein a bit, and they had their little Californian group. You know, the Californians okay. hung out. And then, you know, like me and Pam would hang out, and then Tony Sawyer was another uh, Aussie on tour. So we'd probably hang out in our little group, you know, even though Pam okay. and I would be, you know, we'd still be quite competitive, but we'd still sort of watch the other heats together, you know what I mean? And okay. We'd, we'd watch, yeah, yeah, analyse yeah. it and pick the shit out of it, you know what I mean? Again, okay. Oh, we don't reckon she got that score. She was overscored or – you know, or okay. you know what I mean. Doing doing the usual yeah. is it's still what happens today. You know, yeah, so, I'm sure. So everyone sort of hung in their little groups, kind of thing. You know, so yeah. Okay. Another question I have that comes to mind. You said in Albany, all the guys were supporting you. Yes. So now you're going in. You're going to this world where there's different cultures, maybe in different countries. Yeah. And how yep. how are the other pro surfers, and how was other societies treating the women surfing? Oh, completely different, contrast, or? mate. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Really? And in fact, I, I first learned this when I went from the West Coast, from Albany, and I did that trip that I talked about earlier when I travelled around Australia for a year. Mm-hmm. I just was blindsided by the misogynist, you know, arrogance of the of a lot, not all. Um, okay, of, yeah, of course. Of, of the guys in the water, like, especially when I hit the cities. You know, the country mm. towns weren't as bad, like, because country towns I'd surf and you know, you'd be surfing better, and I'm, I please don't sound this is an arrogant thing, but because you were surfing so much and you got to that level, the av- average local guy, you were up surfing better than them, so they had to shut their mouth. You know what I mean? Like as soon as you, yeah. as soon as you took off on a wave, they were like, "Oh God!" You know what I mean? They'd never seen a girl surfer kind of surf at that level. So a lot of the right. country folk were quite good, but when you got to the cities, you know, and that's where you do get a lot of that is in big cities. You know what I mean? Um, okay, of course. As soon as I got into, like, you know, the, the, the well-known surfing areas, you know, that's when you got that chauvinism. And, oh, I mean, I was told to get out of the water. I was told, you know, this is men's business. I mean, I, I've heard. Really? Oh, I'm not. Ex- and I'm, I believe you. I just don't I'm not exaggerating. Yeah. I'm, I really don't no, have to I know exaggerate. You're not. I'm it's, sure you're not. There's so many of those stories that many women in my era could tell you. And, um, yeah. and, and, and to a point that. That kind of even rivaled us up. I mean, that made us want to surf even more. That wanted better. us to surf even better, you know? Yeah. Because we we were fueled. Makes sense. We were fueled by this negative energy, and we just wanted to prove that we were equals and we could hold our own ground. And I, I, I won't mention names, but I, there's a one guy I remember when I went over for the very first time when I said I went and I went in some of those amateur events and I went in the Australian titles, and we were competing for an Australian title in the water in Sydney and he was out there screaming at us telling us to get out of the water because we're women and this is and this is men's business and this is a very wow. well known everyone would know this guy and, um, <laughs> and this is the attitudes we had to deal with this was an icon male surfer screaming at us yeah we don't belong in the water so that's, that's crazy kind of, I know it's crazy hey and yeah. then you'd get guys you get a lot of guys that you'd be in the water, it'd be a good day, and you'd have the inside and a beautiful big peak would come in and you'd go, I got it, mate, no worries. You know when you do that friendly, I've got it, you know, you're back yes, swinging, of course. you're swinging yeah. and you go, I've got it, mate, no worries. And then they just keep paddling and then you go, I got it. And they keep paddling and then you go, Oi, I've got it, like that. And you yeah, can yeah, yeah. yell at them and who? no one likes yelling. And then they basically still go and they drop in on you. And then you're like, ah, oh. so then you just, that rivals you up. So you end up doing a big old backhand turn right underneath them. And yeah. then you do the big 
carve under the lip and you, you're mm-hmm. snapping at their, at their ears and then they go, oh, holy shit, you know, and then they realise yeah. you can surf and then they sort of back off. Well, you kind of got that a lot. You got dropped in on it a lot. And then they could see that you could surf and then they'd go, oh, <laughs> you know. So I'm going to ask you this, and maybe I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay in the right way. Yeah. Uh, but don't we do that to all surfers, especially if you're unknown? Um, Did you ever do that? I would. Well, a guy yeah, or a girl, look, kind of, maybe. Look, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to say I've never not dropped in on anyone. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that'd make me a hypocrite, wouldn't it? Yeah, I definitely have dropped <laughs> in on people for various reasons. For mm-hmm. maybe, uh, you know, some dickheads paddle out and paddle on my inside and I've waited for yeah. a day for half an hour yeah. and he's not been, or girl, guy or girl, you know what I mean? But I don't purposely yeah, of course. drop in on people. It's either been a mistake or some okay. some assholes paddle on my inside and hasn't waited their turn and I've just gone I've looked at them and gone, see you mate. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, you, you wait your turn. Or someone's been a dickhead and I've I've dropped in on them before or 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 <laughs> someone I've thought they're not gonna make it and I've dropped right. in on them and then they've made it and I've gone, I'm the dickhead. Uh oh. I'm so sorry, I didn't think you were gonna make that. And then yeah. I look like the tool. Yeah, yeah, sure. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll admit that. I'll admit that. Right. But I don't blankly look at someone and go, oh, you've got brown hair, so therefore I'm going to drop in on you. Right. Or, okay. or, you know, you're, you're, you're this or that. So Yeah. I just had to ask that. Being yeah, surfers, we're all, oh, we're all selfish. Absolutely. We are all selfish and we've all got reasons. But, yeah, I, I hope yeah. I've explained that. No, no, 100%. You got it. But I, yeah, I just wanted to ask that. Hmm. So, what do you think in Albany? Let's go way back to when you're yeah. uh, younger. Is there localism, and then you go travel the country and you around the world? And how? What do you feel about localism? Yeah, well, you know what? <sighs> it's a hard one. That one was well, not hard actually. Yeah. I'll, I'll just explain. It. I'll chip away. At it. I don't really like localism, but I understand okay. it. Right? Yeah. I don't like it where it gets taken to the point where people are getting their tie slashed and it's aggressive and it's, um, yeah. you know, and it causes aggression in life because any form of mm-hmm. aggression I don't I don't accept. You know what I mean? Okay. Yep. Um, I understand localism, especially more and more as time goes on because the planet's getting smaller mm-hmm. and people are traveling more and they're, you know, with the internet and people with mobile phones, they're opening up a lot of places. And you get a lot of dickheads with no common sense. You know what I mean? Right. Common yeah, sense yeah, yeah, seems to be something that people aren't taught anymore. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can't, you can't, you can't buy common sense. You can't, you, you know what I mean? Common yep. sense is just something that you, you you learn, and and a lot of people these days don't seem to have it. So you get a <laughs> lot of ning nongs that go to places and they've got their mobiles and they're going, they've calling their friends up and they're they're showing the surf and they're. Or they're putting it online going, oh, look at me. I'm so good. Look at these waves we got at this back beach. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah and they're, yeah. Just, they're, they're, they're idiots, you know, no common sense. So I understand where localism comes from because then I get frustrated too, you know, like because it's right. like, you know, back in the day we'd wake up, there was no, we watched the weather the night before and you, you look at the weather map and you'd learn it and you'd go, oh, I reckon it's going to be a swell kicking in at this direction and it's going to be a window of opportunity. And you'd work all these things out. These days you've got an app on your phone that tells you exactly where to be, what time to be, how to be there, what board to ride, what wetsuit to wear. Do you know what I mean? And Yes. And and now it's kind of like it's so easy for everyone. So there's yeah, I, I get I think you get where I'm going here yes. with this. So I, I understand, of, yeah. I, I kind of do get a bit of localism because it's kind of like you kind of have to have a little bit of authority somewhere. You do. I agree. It was like that alpha male in the on the outside. It's good to keep that keep that pecking order. You know what I mean? Because yeah, you get these dickheads that just come to town. There's no respect. They don't yes. quietly roll in the town, meet some locals, be friendly, yeah. rock up, say good day, sit at the end of the line, take the shit waves for the first day, mm-hmm. meet the people, say hey, it's really nice to be here, and da da da. You know, you get these dickheads that waltz in the town, they paddle straight for the inside, they park in the best parking spot. You you know what I mean? And then they just Yes, yes. They don't I agree with you. They don't know how to play the system. So I don't like localism that pick on those sorts of people just yes. to be a local and just to scare people. Because I think that's yeah. just in society we don't need that in life. 
you know. Yeah. There's, there's extremes. Nope. Got it. There's extremes in both levels. Mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah. So that's kind of how I think about localism. You know, it's I don't I don't like the aggression of it, but I also understand where you have to toe the line. Do you think that um, the common sense is gone? Yeah. And how how did you learn it? Was it just you were in the lineup every day. Well, just look. Right. I think it's life in general. I mean, like you know, you just learn things by learning right and wrong. You know, you're learning mm-hmm. to see to read gray areas. Nothing's black and white. I don't see black or white. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, I do, but you know what I mean. Yeah, like, I know. You, yeah. you kind of got to read between the lines of things. You know what I mean? You kind of got to like see gray area. Every, I'm a firm believer. There's more gray area than there is black and white. You know, like. You got to sort of like, you look at a situation and just, you know, look at it from someone else's sort of perspective, you know, and then, and then analyze it yourself. And, um, you know, it's just common sense is just like people just do ridiculous things these days, you know, like they tie their surfboard on the roof with a piece of string. You know what I mean? It's just like, really? (laughs) You know, and they (laughs) wonder why their boards is flying in the freeway and they're, like yeah. some other car have a car accident because they've done the most stupidest thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. Are you watching pro surfing today? I watch it on and off. Uh, I've, to and be off. honest, uh, I'm I'm a fan of it still, but the way it's sort of gone, I'm quite bored with it, really. Um, Are you? Some of it, yeah, yeah. Um, I, look, I can't watch the wave pool, to be honest. Look, I, I'll watch mm-hmm. it for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I think it's an incredible thing. I'm not ditzing the whole concept of it, but as an ASP, or not ASP, WSL World Tour yes. event, yeah. I think it's stupid. Um, okay. Personally, that's just me. Yep. Um, yep. Um, that's just my opinion. I think from a spectator, after watching it after 15 minutes, I am bored, excuse me, I'm going to say shitless. Sorry, I swore. Yeah. Beep it. But um, I just find it boring. You know, so things like that. I'm not a fan of the um, top five world title thing. I think that's ridiculous too. Okay. I think how can you work all year for something and you could win mm-hmm. every single event for the half of the year yeah. and then kind of stub your toe on a rock and then yeah. have a slight injury and then you go into an mm-hmm. event they held at Trestles, which is, you know, typecasted for certain sur- sort of surfers. And then you got to surf good on a day. I, I just think it's absolutely ridiculous. There you go. That's my opinion on that. So perfect. And and I, I think, love it. I think let's think about it. Like when the event, like let's take the men's event, right? Every okay. year, like when they used to finish at Pipeline, how many years mm-hmm. was it exciting? Every year it was bloody exciting. So it's, right. it's not I like agree. It's making it more exciting because. Nearly every year it went down to the Pipe Masters. Someone had to win or someone had to do good mm-hmm. at the pipe or someone – and it was always action-packed. It was always thrilling right to the end, Yeah, you know. So, right. And I just think but that makes it a better world champion, you know. There were a few years, I think in the years you were surfing pro, where yep. they moved it to like Manly or something Yeah, too, they right? did. And once again, ridiculous, I think. Yeah. You know what I mean? So North Shore should be the end of I the reckon. year. I'll put it in, well, just really good quality, perfect waves, you know, like okay. somewhere yeah, where you're going to have the opportunity to get something with a bit of power and, you know, and, and, and maybe, you know, lefts or rights, you know, so no yep. one, no one is, you know, if you're goofy Favorite. or you're regular, you know, and yeah. that's what the good thing with pipe is like, you know, you can go left or right. Back door. You know? I know the women's is different because they used to have it at Maui. But at least, but at least yeah. it's a perfect wave. You know what I mean? It is a really perfect. It's wave. a really perfect wave. You know, so yeah. I just think the girls and the guys should be put in. Look, Trestles is a great wave. Let's let's face fact. I'm not. But not for the end of the year. I don't think so. I think it should be a mid year yeah. thing. It should be. It's it's a brilliant wave to have a WSL event. It's epic. Yes. You know, it's a yeah. hot dog wave. Let's face it. You yeah. know what I mean? It's a it's a ripple hot dog wave, and it gives the aerialists. A good opportunity to the showcase know, them sort showcase of talents. all of that, but I just think the world title should be decided throughout the whole year. So back okay. to your question, I do watch some of the events and I love it. You know, I, I tend to pick places like Pipe. I watch J Bay. I watch Bells. I like watching Margaret's. So I like watching some of the events, yeah. but 
I have no real interest in watching the beach break events in Brazil and stuff like that. Nothing against the Brazilians. Love you guys. You're epic. But, you know, some of the conditions are just onshore slop. And yeah, it's, I hate it's the just, beach, basically. It's great surfing. It's epic surfing. Mm-hmm. But I get bored with it as a spectator. Right. Yeah. Yes. So I get, they kind of answered my question, but I'm going to ask you anyhow. Yeah. What was your favorite place to compete? Well, for me, um, it was Hawaii and it was Bell's okay. Beach because they were the two best events that we had. They were, they were like all the rest of our events were held in beach slop. Beach we were, break. We were yeah. either in Bondi Beach, Manly Beach, Huntington Beach. You know, we were, we were at crappy beach breaks. We'd go to Chiba Beach, yeah. wait for a typhoon to go past, and then, you know, <laughs> Way we got some ways, yay, rip up, you know, right, right batten down the hatches, yeah. wait for the typhoon to go past, and then we'll be surfing, you know. So it was all really, yeah. m- majority of the times it was really crap surf, and then that's why I loved Hawaii because you yeah. always had that opportunity, and we had a waiting period, and we waited, and we surfed sunset or Halle Eva, and we usually got good waves, you know, and and same with Bells, even if Bells was one or two foot surfing rink on at least it was going in a direction and you could had the chance to surf a wave that wasn't a a closeout yeah so that okay was pro surfing today the the women they've really made leaps and yeah. bounds especially oh, when a pipe do you have a well yeah. first off do you have a favorite female surfer now like a pro surfer mm, oh that's a toughie that's a toughie <laughs> Um, I've always been okay. a Steph fan, of course. You know, <clears throat> Steph. Well, everyone Steph, is. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know. Yeah. Um, but you know, but she can also be a bloody frustrating server to watch too. I just want to bang her sometimes. And go, put the firecracker <laughs> up the bum and go, Gilmore, get going for God's sakes. You know what I mean? Like, she's a bit okay. like you know, she, gets, she gets a bit like deer in headlights sometimes. You know, incredible yeah. server to watch when she's in form. Like, you know, amazing. Mm-hmm. Of course, you know, Chris Amore's amazing to watch. And you know, amazing, Katie, yeah. seeing you know, Katie, Sim, you know, all the young crew come up, Simmers, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, Simmers, yeah, she's she's amazing. Yeah. I love I love that skating style that you know, like that that blend that she does with her surfing. You know, it's really yeah. free flowing. It's it's awesome. You know, uh, I really like the the late model of Tyler Wright. <laughs> you know, like okay, yeah, yeah. I like the now the, the, her style of surfing now. It's sort of like there's a few more different sort of things in her repertoire. Um, but, yeah, I'd, I'd say they're my sort of favourites to, to, to watch because okay. like Katie's the new one coming up. You know, a little bit more consistency with yes. her would be would be absolutely awesome. She's going to be – she's like the cat amongst the pigeons kind of thing, you know, <laughs> where the others are <laughs> consistently funny. quite good, you know what I mean? And, you know, you, know, you put them in decent waves, they just – they rip, you know, seeing Carissa at back door is awesome. I love watching her at back door because she's such a good tube rider. You know, it's great. Has your surfing changed over the years with you um, surfing so? I think I'm still, I think our generation, I'll speak for myself, is like we tend to just stick to power surfing. Like I've tried doing okay. a few little aerials and stuff like that, but then you go, <laughs> oh, my back hurts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, so, but you know, to be honest, I left the tour quite early. I left about, Oh, I was, I was about twenty nine, I think thirty, and um, to be that's so early. I was my, I honestly believe my best best surfing came into my late thirties, like really, yeah, I really do, I really do. I just think for me, like it just yeah. took me that time to get the momentum. Maybe because I started surfing so late, you know, like mm-hmm. I didn't like we said started surfing sixteen and a half. You know, by the time I left the circuit and I started surfing decent waves on a regular yeah. basis and going on trips and stuff like that, I went to Tavaru a few times and going to Indo, I really think my surfing improved and it matured. Me as a surfer matured and I just slowed down a lot more and I just I wasn't so frantic and and I really think some of my best surfing was in my mid thirties to, to forty. Yeah. It had the power still, it had you know, and I and I think if it was if if I had the opportunity to be, you know, where I could exercise it and only just surf and stretch more and do all that sort of stuff and, and yes. have the equipment that came later on in those eras, because let's face it, the the surfboard equipment these days, like I, I've I ride um I, I ride um Mayhem's and I ride a local guy here called Scotty James. Their boards, oh, 
like I jump on those boards and I go, if only I had these boards in the eighties and, and, and stuff. Wow, like, yeah. Like, oh my god, like your surfing just goes up sixty percent when you're on a different when 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 you get on a board that really that you connect with, you know. And I just mm-hmm. find the equipment these days is so good, and it's so it's a lot easier to get that good surfboard these days. Do you get like custom shapes? Or are you just buying them off the rack? Um, I've I've get customs. Yeah, I get customs. I mean, these days it takes in Australia so long to get a mayhem. It's like, oh my god, I'll be ten years older. But um, but they're yeah. usually pretty good. Even if you you get a certain basic model, you know, these days they they're quite good. Are you surfing any like uh, local contest or anything? No, just I hate those, it. Like giggles? I hate anything. I hate it. Do you hate it? I hate it. I hate it. Look, I've done. I, I did the masters when they I, well, WSL did it a while ago, and I had a fantastic yes. time. But mate, I'm I've got ADHD, mate. I if I get in contests, I'm like a deer in the headlights. I just can't cope with okay. it. I, and that's why I realised I don't know how I got the results when I got them back in the day because. And you got good results. I actually like you got good results, but I don't know how I did it because I just can't handle the pressure. I just – my whole system shuts down. It's the weirdest okay. thing. I just – I get too much adrenaline to the brain and I just sit out there looking at the horizon and then the hooter goes – the two hooter goes and that heat's finished. And I'm like, where did that half an hour go? I just uh, sat here. Shit. Yeah, shit. So the, <laughs> let me ask you this question then. You got to travel all over the world several, several yep. times, yep. right? You're going there for events. Yeah. Did you take time aside to enjoy yep. what that area absolutely. gave you or were you just Ab- – oh, you did. Okay. No, absolutely. I was one of those surfers like I'd go to California for the Huntington Pro and I'd spent yeah. three months in California. Like I, oh, I cool. really like California. I had a ball. I had a ball in America. Like I used to go there and – really get comfortable, rent a little ha- room somewhere or stay with some okay. mates. And, um, you know, I, I stay with Debbie Beach and a lot and her husband down yeah. in uh, uh, La Jolla. And we go to Mexico okay. all the time and, you know, and then I'd stay up at mates at Newport. And I really embraced California. I loved it because it was like the it was like a whole other world. It was like a big world, you know. Yeah. And okay. I, I enjoyed it. So, I'd go to California for three months and go to the trade shows and do all that. And then I'd go to, depending on when, then maybe we went to Europe, you know, and then I'd go to Europe and then I'd go to France for three months. So I'd spend three months oh, cool. in France and go down to Spain and we'd go over to the Mediterranean and we'd go, you know, go to St. Tropez or something like that and do see different things or go up to the Alps. And I'd always go to Hawaii, you know, four weeks early. And spend wow. a month before the event. So yeah, I loved it. I love embracing where I used to go. The fact that it was too expensive to fly home all the time was okay. one point. So we just went around helped. the world ticket kind of thing, you know? Yes. We'd buy one ticket and then we'd just spend probably nine months to ten months away traveling. Yeah. By the time you get home, your surfboard bag was so full of stuff, you'd be like <laughs> It was just, you know, you'd be dragging trophies and wetsuits and, you know. Yeah. Going through customs must have oh, been Oh, it was wreck. hideous. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When, when, when you're, when you are like, standing in line to check in, it would yeah. be one of the ner- most nerve-wracking experiences you'd have on the whole tour because you'd be eyeballing each person behind the counter trying to work out who was the cranky one and who was the bitch and who was the nice guy, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, trying to get the person that, that let you go through with all that weight. Wow. Okay, so you, I'm glad to hear that you embraced it. I mean, so you weren't yeah. just so into the contest no, that it was – loved it. I loved the whole Dictating everything. I love the whole travel. Oh. And meeting locals oh. and meeting people and, like, you'd be in France, you'd go to the markets and, you know, just I just – you'd rent a house and you'd all go down and surf all day on the beach and then go up and, you know, drink beer and sand dunes and those little, yeah. you know – oh, I just loved it. Yeah, it was great. Wow, it looks cool. So I, I do have a question, yep. and you can correct me. Yep. So back in the 80s and stuff, and even the 90s, they didn't do a lot of profiles like Surfer Magazine or Surfer Magazine yep. on women. Yeah, no, no. It was it was tough, mate. Like they, The only way you'd get an article back in that day was when they'd do a whole blanket article on women in general. So okay. they would say, right, okay. We've been harassed by, you know, blah, 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 and blah, 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 and such and such. You know, why don't you do things on women? And they go, oh, shut up, you women. So then they'd go, 
Okay. They'd go, oh, all right, we'll do one, and then they they do it just a generalized article on on women itself. It was very, yeah. very, very rare that you got articles. I mean, it started to happen. Yeah, I'll, then they did their own mount magazine. Yeah, and then I was, later. you know, every every individual was fortunate enough to get one. I was one that was fortunate enough to get one, where I had yeah. some good photos from Hawaii and. Yeah, uh, surfing backdoor pipe and off the wall yeah. and stuff like that. So it did happen later, but it was very rare, very rare. My opinion is there's more opportunity, especially if you're selling to people, more girls are going to buy. Oh, absolutely. Look, with their selling for marketing. That's right. That's right. And and it was, I mean, that was the whole thing that we used to ch- chirp and chant about is like promote us. And look, this is what we yes. said in that film, Girls Can't Surf, is um, – yes. You know, it's like everything, and I've said this a, a hundred times. It's like it's like a plant. If you don't give it nutrition and water and anything, it, it dies. If you feed right. something and nurture it and give it this and give it love and give it that, you get a product from that product. You know, and it turns yeah. into something that's a good thing. And that's what we used to say, or just promote us because we used to say women buy shit. Women buy yes, women buy 100%. stuff for boyfriends. Women are the ones that go out and buy the stuff for the blokes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like promote us and there's a whole other market there that you guys could tap into. And they course, missed it. And they missed it. And they were like, oh, yeah, whatever. You chicks couldn't sell, you know, rice to the Chinaman. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was yeah. like it was that – that's what we were dealing with. It wasn't until the 90s and like, that whole Roxy story – about the board sport, yep. and we we're like, we were banging on about that years ago. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you know, like do board shorts for us, do something for us. You know, like, but yes. anyway, but that's all being played out in history now. But yes. come back to prove that, you know, the mark they were wrong. They and- were wrong, exactly. Yeah, that's that's right. So, I know for my local area here, yep. when you paddle out now, but maybe, and I th- and I'm I'm gonna say this is because there's maybe multiple generations surfing as. When I started surfing, it was first generation yeah. surfers. I see a lot more females in the world, a lot of little girls. Yeah. yeah. Almost more than the boys in here Absolutely. in Oceanside. Absolutely. Yeah. It's blown up. It is. It's, it's unbelievable. And I know, look, different areas, you know, are, are different. And like, it's not where I'm yes. from. I'm, I'm living on the East Coast now. I'm sure a lot of your viewers would know Byron Bay. It's pretty well known around the world. Yeah. And it's a warm place. I mean, I live just out of Byron because it's so crowded in there now. But, um, yeah. You know, you go to Byron, it's probably 70% women or, you know, whatever, 60-50 or 50-50. You know what I mean? It's yeah, yeah, between, but, between guys and girls. It's unbelievable. It really does right. blow your mind at how many women surf these days. You know, and you go up to the Gold Coast, mm-hmm. same, it's just crazy up there. Like the amount of women that surf these days, it's just ridiculous. It's Yeah, it's, it is mind-blowing. The only problem with that is there's just too many surfers out there. Exactly. I'm with you, Mike. <laughs> what are we going to do, buddy? <laughs> Especially by you. I'm sure it's packed. Oh, I don't go there crowded. very often. I only go there when we've had a cyclone that's been pumping for days. But, yeah. I mean, but it's worldwide now, isn't it? So many people surf. It's just crazy. And what do you think is the cause of that? I'm the cause of it, you know. I mean, I I have to put my hand up. I promoted surfing. I, I wanted Yes, to you did. You know, I'll be honest, you know, I hear I was saying, yeah, surfing's great. And, you know, being a professional surfer, I had to promote the sport to make it a professional sport, you know, that goes hand in hand. You know, I can't deny. But I think what's promoted it more so than ever is what going back to what I said before about the internet, going into all these different places now when it's, it's filmed, it's documented. It's a lot easier for people now to work out how to surf, where to surf, all that sort of stuff, you know, and and then also I will say that, look, I still get uncrowded days, you know, and, and you got to have the initiative. You can find them. you got to find them, mate, you know. you just got to be yeah. smarter, you know, and that's keeps us on our toes, doesn't it, Mike? You know what I mean? It's yes, like, it does. You know, I think, well, I'm not, I'm not a dickhead. I'm not going to go down there because I know it's going to be crowded and I know the wind's <laughs> going this way. No one knows about this bank up the beach, so I'm going to go up there. You know what I mean? Okay. You just got to kind of yeah. think outside of the box, you know, and to sort of yes. be that little bit smarter and don't go to because you know. Let's face it, humans are like sheep. You know, humans. Are like, they, you know what? Humans, yes, they are. You know? Humans are just like like they just, <laughs> they just follow the one in front of them. You know? Oh look! Yes, they rock up. They get out of the car and they look at ten people sitting on a peak. 
And it go, must be good. Well, I'm going out. We're, we're out there. Let's go. I haven't even yeah. looked down the beach or looked up the beach and to, to another peak, you know. Thank God people are like sheep because it saves it for people like us that aren't. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, Jody, yeah. thank you so much for coming on. It was so fun. Uh, lovely wow. to meet you, Mike. It's been awesome. It's great. Good questions, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yep. All right, everybody. This is me and Jody Cooper. We're out of here. See ya. Life has its twists, has its turns. Life's many months, many seasons. Time flows at one pace, it don't change Such beauty in being alive on earth And every little thing on this planet has such worth For it's worth the simple things in life Whoa, simple things in life, they make me smile Simple things in life Simple things in life, they make me smile. Sun comes up in the morning. Birds, how they sing, well, it's dawning. Sun, it casts a warm shadow around me. I look to the sky and tears well in my eyes. For does that human race? Only no one pace It's like an overpass Underpass six lane highway An overpass Underpass six lane highway A cellular Technology runs our life For it's with the simple things in life Whoa, simple things in life They make me smile Hey guys, Endless Summer box set. This thing is legit. It's authentic, numbered certificate in it. It has a five frame film strip from the original print. You will literally own a piece of history. It has a specially minted bronze medallion. Dude, that thing's sick. Okay, there's so much more here. Go to the show notes. There's a link on there. Go check this piece of history out. This thing's rad. Seriously. Smithsonian American History Museum has it. It took four years of research with 3.5 in production. All hand assembled. This thing's rad. So much to this awesome box set. 
remastered DVD, sharper images than the original film. But dude, this thing's so sick. Link in the show notes.